guys. I'm Manisha Gupta and the spotlight is on crude oil prices right now where we have started September on a slightly weaker note and this is after 4% of a decline for the month of August as well. While there are a lot of uncertainties in the global market but the latest reaction for the crude oil prices comes in from the OPEC meeting on 1st of September where OPEC has decided to stick to its original plan not heed to US which said that OPEC should be increasing production as the months go by as the demand is recovering. But OPEC remember in its meeting in July and August itself has said that they will be increasing production by 4 lakh barrels every month until December. OPEC until the month of June or July was nearly 5.8 million barrels as a surplus in its, in its balance sheet. So what we will see is 4 lakh barrels come in every month until December. That is 1.6, 1.8 million barrels coming back into the markets from OPEC and the bunch of the remaining would come in in the next year now. So uh, that is where the markets stand right now. The demand recovery clearly has been on the stronger side and that shows into the in case of the prices there. Well, OPEC output cut deal began in April 2020 and some way or the other, the OPEC and the allies had le led by Russia have managed to ensure that the crude oil prices do stay sustainably on the higher side. Uh, we have seen a negative crude prices in the year 2020 and that is when OPEC and allies came within force and ensured that the crude prices are supported. Well, OPEC produces nearly 40% of the global crude. OPEC oil exports represent 60% of the total petroleum which is traded internationally. So at this point in time, OPEC is quite relevant. I mean, that is a question that was being asked earlier, a few years ago, when the US shale output was 11 or even 12 million barrels per day and US had become the largest producer in the world. The export numbers for US also were increasing but pandemic clearly has changed all of that and it has brought back OPEC, OPEC on the fore, on the surface and the relevance is more stronger than ever before as we have seen with the kind of spare capacity that the OPEC and allies have and the whole point being on how OPEC and allies alone brought the crude oil prices from the negative uh, to nearly $70 a barrel as where they stand for both the crude varieties here. Well, the other important thing is to watch for this week is the U.S. crude inventories where we saw a decline of 7.2 million barrels. This is now the fifth straight week when you have seen a decline in U.S. crude inventories. That should have been a supportive factor, but the increase in U.S. gasoline inventories tells you that the final product demand is still uneven and that is keeping the prices quite choppy. But going back to OPEC yet again, and they have revised the demand growth on the upward side as well. In 2021, that is the current year, 5.95 million barrels per day of a demand growth is what they are expecting as compared to last year because last year we saw a decline of 9 million barrels per day. So nearly half of that is coming back in this year and for 2022, OPEC expects 4.2 million barrels per day of a demand growth over and above what we would see in this year. So the demand growth is back and that would be supportive for the prices. As far as the OPEC output itself goes, well, for the month of August, it is at 26.93 million barrels per day, which is the highest, as I said, in last in the all of last year. And when you look at the month of July, it was 24.83 million barrels per day. So on a month-on-month -month basis, we are looking at these huge jump coming for the OPEC production as well, which is coming in as OPEC and allies, and then Saudi Arabia, which had taken a voluntary cut in sense of production. So that also seems to be coming back into the markets. The other important number clearly is about the global inventories where for 2021, OPEC believes that we could be looking at a deficit of around 0.9 million barrels per day, so which is less than a million barrels per day. But for the next year, they have uh, cut their surplus to 1.6 million. So while we are looking at a stronger demand in the next year, the production growth is expected to be slightly on the weaker side. Also supporting prices could be the OECD inventories, which are still below 2015-2019 annual average. And this is expected to be like this until May 2022. So so there are a lot of supportive factors into the market there. The next OPEC meeting is now on the 4th of October. So until then, there are less expectations that we will see statements come in from OPEC or allies until there is a huge price movement into the markets. But the expectations are that for the rest of this year now, we will be looking at crude oil prices trading the same range at 60 to $70 on the higher side. A decline below 60 would lead to OPEC coming back into the markets. Prices higher than 70, are, as we have seen, are not staying on because various countries are still dealing with COVID cases and restrictions and decline in planes. For example, you have Malaysia, Indonesia, um, uh, you have Japan, 
there also is Australia, New Zealand. These are some of the countries which are still facing restrictions. So that could keep the prices in check. But next year, when we see demand come back, when more and more countries are opening, there is more normalcy in meaning coming back. There would be more support for prices. This year itself, in some of the weeks in last one month itself, we have seen demand at pre-COVID levels, at 2019 levels. So the expectation is that the demand only would get better from here. And what prices you see this year, next year perhaps could be even higher prices.